I'm William Chavis. I'm a professor of international law at Middlesex University. And I'm talking tonight about the European Convention on Human Rights and the relationship that the, course, the, the case law of the European Court has with international criminal law. International criminal law is a distinct discipline, it's a distinct field, and it's the basic law that is applied by international criminal courts like the International Criminal Court, the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia, and so on. Well, the issues it raises and where, where we, we get some interaction with the European Convention concerns matters like the retroactivity of criminal prosecutions. At, at the very first International Criminal Tribunal at Nuremberg, they prosecuted Nazi leaders for crimes that had not yet been written down when the trial took place. And this, in principle, raises problems with the rule, what we call the principle of legality, the rule against retroactive criminal prosecution. And so our attempt was to say, was to hitch it to Nuremberg and say, this is unfinished business of the earlier European international uh, tribunal. Hi, uh, my name is Roger Sohota. I'm a solicitor who practiced for five years before the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia and at the Special Court for Sierra Leone, and I'm also on the list of counsel before the International Criminal Court. Um, tonight, it's been my privilege, um, together with Bill Shabazz, to present a lecture on the recent cases where the European Court of Human Rights in Strasbourg has had to um, consider allegations of historical rights abuses and crimes against humanity and war crimes. There is a contrary argument, and uh, those that advance this argument uh, claim that there is a practical case for granting amnesties in ending prolonged conflict as they may lead to positive outcomes. The complication of the European Court of Human Rights is that the governments often prosecute people for crimes that were not identified at the time or were not codified. And, and so this is what's happened. Our values, to some extent, have moved on about war crimes today. And so there's always a, a question of that an injustice may be being done when we try to you know, apply the standards that, that we accept today to things that happened 40 and 50 years ago. And that's what the debates are about. There is so much uh, misinformation spread in the media about the work of the European Court and uh, much of its work is uh, distorted and trivialised. So um, for me one of the important things about tonight is that we've been able to focus on a small number of cases that uh, perhaps a, uh, a tiny number of academic experts may be familiar with but to bring them to a wider audience because they really touch on some fundamentally important issues. I go to conferences all the time where you have military people who say well we don't need to ask what they're doing. They can be asleep and we can kill them. We can take them prisoner, but we don't have to because we can kill them because they're active participants in hostilities. 